Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will be creating the Stampede ability from Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. After watching this you can alter the visuals of your ability to better fit your game. Here we are in an empty project. We will begin by setting up our scene. Add a plane and scale it up a bit then create a new material for our plane using the checkered texture that comes with Unity. Assign the material to our plane. Now I am going to duplicate this material and remove the checker texture then set its color to red. This will be the enemy material. Add a sphere to our scene. If your plane's position is set at 0 then your sphere Y position should be 0.5 to have it just above the plane. Rename the sphere to enemy and set its stack to enemy as well. And give it a rigid body with the use gravity disabled. I'm going to remove the smoothness from our plane material because I don't really like how it reflects the sunlight and then duplicate our enemy and place a bunch around our plane. After that's done I will create an empty game object that will hold all our enemies so that our hierarchy is less crowded with game objects. Create an empty game object. Rename it Stampede and set its position to 0.5 on the Y axis, so that it's just above the plane. Now create another empty game object and call this Start. For its position set the Z value to minus 20, this basically places it behind the main transfer we named Stampede. Cool, now add a box collider to our Start game object and set it to be a trigger. This will be the radius on which our objects will be spawned, so the bigger the size of this trigger collider, the more spread our objects will be spawned. I am going to leave it at 40 on the X, 5 on the Y, and 1 on the Z. Cool, now duplicate our start game object and rename it end. Then instead of having it in the back, this one will be on the front, so set the Z value to 20. This end game object will only be used to change the pivot point of our stampede. So now if you rotate it, you will notice that they are both rotating in relation to our stampede object. However, if we disable our end game object and go back to move the stampede object, you will see the pivot point get set back to the start game object instead of the middle. This can cause unwanted rotations when it comes to moving or rotating the stampede. So yeah, the end game object is just a stabilizer. Create a sphere. Rename it Stampede Object and turn it into a prefab by dragging it to your project window. Cool. Remove it from your scene and create two new scripts. One will be called Stampede Script and we will assign it to our Stampede in the scene. Then the second script will be called Stampede Object Script and we will assign it to our prefab. Alright, let's open up our programming software of choice and begin coding. First things first, we need to set up our variables. We will need three floats. The duration of our Stampede, how fast the objects will spawn and the offset from the ground. Then we will need our prefab we created and a layer mask. For hidden private variables, we will start with a box collider and two floats. One for our spawn rate timer and another one to calculate the height of our box collider. Under our start, we will be setting the spawn rate timer and then referencing our box collider. On update, we check if the duration is bigger than zero and also if the spawn rate timer is bigger than zero and if this is true, then we lower the timer by delta time. Create a new function called spawn object. And now if our spawn rate timer is smaller than zero, then we call this function. We also need to lower the duration, so just copy this line of code and swap spawn rate timer for duration. If the duration is smaller than zero, we need to destroy this game object, but first we will get all our children that have the name stampede object 
and unparented so that they don't disappear all of a sudden when we destroy this game object. Okay, awesome. Now, down in under our spawn object function, we will need to reset the spawn rate timer to our spawn rate and begin calculating the spawn position for our object. First thing we do is set the collider height to the Y size value of our collider and add 1. Then, to calculate a random position inside our box collider, we will create a new function. This function basically gives you a vector 3 with random values determined by the bounds we give it. So, back up here, we will create a temporary variable and call it random position, and this will be our new function, and for bounds, we will use the bounds of our box collider. Cool. Now we are getting a random position inside our box. However, the problem is that they will most likely spawn above or below the ground. So we need to find the ground to spawn them on the correct Y coordinates. We will set the random position that Y to be the Y position of the box collider. And we will add half of its height so that this position will be at the top of the collider. This way we can do a raycast from the top of the box collider all the way down to the end using the height of the box collider. Now we need to save the ground position so create a new temporary variable called YPOS and set it to be the hit point at Y and add the spawn Y offset. We will now create another temporary variable and call it spawn position. This will be a new vector tree that will use these values. We can finally create our object. One quick thing before that though, I will change the name to Stampede Object. Use our spawn position and quaternion identity. We will also assign this newly created object to be a child of this transform so that we don't fill our hierarchy with a bunch of objects. Set its name to Stampede Object. This is important because we destroy them up here and so the names must match for it to work properly. Awesome, now we need to reference the stampede object script to assign some values, but we have to work on that script just yet, so leave this as it is and let's work on that script. Just like with any other script, we will begin by setting up some variables. Create two booleans, one to stop our update loop and another to visualize our AOE radius. Then four new floats, movement speed, radius, dead timer and travel distance. For hidden variables, we will need a float called Y offset, which we will assign in our previous script and a layer mask that we will also assign in our previous script. Then a vector 3 to store our spawn location, the height of the collider and a reference to the box collider. Two particles, which we will create after we're done with this script and a mesh renderer. First, we need to get the mesh render of the sphere so we can disable it when it dies, and then find our two particle systems. We will also set the spawn location and calculate the height of the box collider. Cool. Now, under our update, we check if it is not dead, then we do something very similar to what we just did on our previous script to calculate the Y position, but instead of using a random X and Z value, we use this transform's current values and we move it forward using the movement speed variable. If we don't hit anything though, we destroy ourselves. Now we need to find out the distance we have traveled from our spawn location and if it is bigger than what we have set for our travel distance variable, then we destroy ourselves. For when we collide with enemies, we will use untrigger enter and check if the tag is enemy and we are not dead create a new function and add it inside our if statement. Under our new function, we will need to play our impact particle and stop the looping one. Then we use overlap sphere to get all the colliders with the tag enemy and remove them from the game. Or damage them, it's up to you. Then we disable the render for our sphere, set the is dead to true so that it stops or loops and destroy yourselves using the delay we set in the inspector. 
create a Andra Gizmos to visualize our AOE and let's open up our other script. So back here we need to assign the box collider as well as the layer mask and the spawn Y offset. Save this and jump back into Unity. Ok we need to set some variables, but first we will do our two particles. Open our prefab and create a new particle system. Make sure its position is set to zero, same with the rotation. I will lower the duration, lifetime and speed to 2. Change the simulation space to world and increase the simulation speed to 2. Under our shape settings, I will lower the radius to 0.5 and set its rotation to 180 on the X axis. Awesome. Now just rename it loop effects and duplicate it. Our new particle system will be called impact effects. And under our shape change it to sphere, then remove the rate over time and give it a burst of 30 particles. Set the start speed to zero and go down to our render settings. Change the render mode to mesh and set the mesh to be a sphere. For the material, select the default line material that comes with Unity. Enable color over lifetime and make it fade. And also enable size over lifetime and choose the ramp going down. Alright, that's looking pretty nice. And uh, we're not even using any cool looking textures and meshes. I'm going to increase the radius a bit and burst particles as well. Okay, looking good. Last thing we will do here is disable looping as well as play on awake. And we're good. Back to our scene, let's select our stampede. For testing purposes, I'm going to set the duration really high. Spawn rate to every one second, the offset to two. I know this value will not be right, but at least you will get to see what it does. For stampede object, drag our prefab in there and for layer mask, we will use whatever our plane layer is. You can see it up here, I have it set to terrain, so I will assign it accordingly. Select our prefab in the project window and let's set its values. Enable debug so we can see the damage radius, movement to 5, radius to 3, the timer to 2, and travel distance to 10. All good. Now hit play and let's see how it looks. First thing you will notice is that they're not really reaching the enemies. And they are also floating, so select Stampede object and set the spawn Y offset to 0.5. And it's all good now. If we set it to 0, you will see they will be inside the plane, and that's not good. I'm going to increase the spawn rate and fix the Y position. Cool. Now select our prefab inside our project window and increase the travel distance to 20. Now they should travel all the way to the center, then disappear. Because we set the box collider to be minus 20, remember? Radius is huge, so I lower it to 1. Actually, 1.5. Movement speed to 10. Awesome. Now the travel distance to 30. Okay, pretty neat. I will duplicate our enemies to cover more ground and set the spawn rate to 0.2. Alright, I think we nailed it guys. I'm just going to change the travel distance to 40 because that is the distance between our start and end box colliders. Voila! We have successfully recreated Beastmaster's stampede ability from Warcraft 3. You can customize it to look however you like. Here are a few examples. <laughs> Go crazy with it. Please subscribe. I have another ability queued up to recreate in Unity, so stay tuned for that. 
Thank you for watching and have a good one. Bye bye.